doctor that said, uh, do you have to be called to do exorcism or deliverance? So your response to that is, I guess that you were called, but do you have to be called? Have you developed a system? I don't think you've developed a systematic theology of this yet, have you? You're just doing it. Uh, well, I'm, I mean, I don't know. What, you, what do you mean by systematic theology? Well, I, I, just what it says, a, a way of presenting this that, that, that has a, a construct to it. it. It's got, okay, you can do this, you can't do this, and so on. And so in answer to the question, do you have to have a calling, for example? That would be part of the systematic theology. In other words, can, okay. a, can anybody so, do this, or do you have to have a special anointed or calling from the Lord to do that? What, what is your take on, thinking on that? Well, the Bible says that all those who believe these signs shall follow them, and casting out of demons is one of the signs. All those who believe. Right. And so I believe that every person should be able to cast out demons at some level and that we're all called to do that. But we all have different callings with the, the, the extent, the level of demonic powers we are dealing with. For example, there's different levels of demonic powers. There's principalities. And so not everyone is called to be casting out principalities. There's different levels in the demonic realm, uh, different different levels of powers and authorities uh and in the same way in the kingdom of god there's different levels of anointings and so th the anointing level one receives is based on their surrender but also god's calling upon their life okay well what would so what? like you can be fully surrendered but maybe you're not called to you're not called to walk in that high level anointing to deal with principalities but you're still called to cast out demons Okay. And, and do you read books on the subject? Do uh, you try to study it or are you just going with the flow? You ju jumped into the river and you're, you're just swimming down the stream? Or, or, or do you make a study of this? <laughs> no, I'm, or, or... I'm, I'm very, I've, I've studied it a lot and I've learned so much from my spiritual father as he has been in ministry for more than 40 years, casting out demons for a very, very long time with a huge Okay. church of several thousands and i've seen their testimonies of these people who have been free many years ago still free walking in the power of god themselves now so i'm in a, a very amazing place to be uh, uh equipped and mentored and taught so i've okay. received a lot of teaching and equipping there through my spiritual father in terms of uh your audience um, do you see yourself as an apostle to gen z gen x to uh, how do you see this calling? Because obviously you're young. I'm not going to be so impolite as to ask your age, but but uh, <laughs> let's just say you, you're way this side of uh, those who have been doing this for a very long time. Uh, how do you see yourself connecting with people and who do you think you best connect with? I mean, I have a heart and I, and I believe God has called me to to every age, and we, it's beautiful to see it at my at our services, the services I minister at, and, and at my church. You see every age from, and you, you see young children hungry to receive freedom and be free, and you see elderly hungry to receive freedom and be free. So personally, for me, I've I've always just had this uh, vision and heart for every age, just because what I as what God's called me to do is to equip the body of Christ and to release the power of God to heal and deliver. And the, those things are needed for every single age. And as you walk forward in this, do you have an expectation of where this is going? Or, or are you just taking this a step at a time? Because you're still relatively new in it. Uh, there's not a long track record for they say, oh, I've come from here to here to here. Uh, it sounds to me you're just enjoying what's happening and seeing what God does in people's lives and waiting on the next thing. Is that is that a fair analysis? Yes, um, there's there's been, you know, promises from God that have been spoken to me uh, for the future that I I hold on to those promises and I believe in them and I'm excited for them. But God has really taught me the importance of being content in every season and his and in his timing. And so I try to stay grateful always with 
all that he's done and where I'm at and just excited for all that's to come. Let me come back, circle back to the woman thing again, because uh, that seems to be such an issue people get hung up on. Uh, uh -huh. We have many people involved in the extension aspects of our ministry, uh, in our deliverance teams, which are established all over the United States and all over the world for that matter. And if we suddenly said women couldn't cast out demons, that whole branch of our ministry would basically disappear because probably 60 or 70 percent of the people who are involved in that are women. And uh, the, mm. uh, the woman who's actually head over that division of our ministry, General Eger, as we call her, she's probably watching right now, is 85 years of age and uh, is just as strong and powerful in deliverance as anybody much younger than her. So you know, we respect and recognize that that is a distinctive calling. And in fact, one of the reasons I think that we personally have seen so many people who, and individuals who are women involved in deliverance, is that women have a heart more than men do. Let's just be honest about it. They, they do have that emotionality about them that they connect with people. And when you deal with people who are demonized, most of them are broken. They've, they've had things in their life which have not gone well and there is that broken. And I find that, that women uh, tend to connect more with the heart of people. And in some ways, they're better at doing deliverance than men are. I hope that the rest of the demon slayers are listening to me out there. They just need to know that, okay? Would you agree with that, that, that women do have more of a heart for the brokenness of the people who are bound by the enemy? Uh, I would just say it depends because I would say that men can be just the same way, but it just takes surrender. You know what I mean? Like, I never want to say, I would never want to say that, like, um, a man who surrendered to God and like me who surrendered to God that I would be able to connect better. I don't think so. I think it's just a matter of surrender. I think that it's true what you say about, about what you're saying, but I think maybe that has to do with men need to surrender in that area more. Some men, not all men. And so, and, and but where that area and woman comes more naturally, 